Hello, everyone. It's Lamont Qureshi. You're listening to the Expat Brad Podcast. Welcome. I hope you've been having a great week and you're sliding into summer with ease, sliding into those shorts you haven't worn in a while, realizing you still fit in. If that is true for you, good for you, because I have to go shopping again. <laughs> every year, I'm at that stage now. I'm at, Every year I go, I'm going to be ready with a summer bod and... We may have to redefine what summer bod means. It's the kind of body that you want to have covered up more or it protrudes out. <laughs> it protrudes out so much that you're like, hey, I can see it from far. That's Sal's summer bod. Awesome. Like the rising sun and my rising tummy. They're both <laughs> just terrible. Uh, other than that, I hope you've been having fun. It's been a busy time for me. Uh, I haven't been uh, regular on my podcast, so I do apologize to my regular listeners. It's uh, It's been hectic. You know, I have flown to more places and more times in the last six months than I may have done over the last three, four years. Even without the pandemic hitting, uh, I was just not flying a lot. And, uh, and it's been very interesting countries as well. If you've been listening to my podcast, I've been to Algeria, uh, Jordan, a little trip to Pakistan, of course, hometown, and then uh, Turkey very recently. Um, I realized I may have been the last person to have flown to Istanbul based on, based on the fact that when I put it up on my stories on Instagram, uh, l- like every single person I know uh, had a recommendation. And I'm very grateful. I'm very thankful. They gave me some real great tips. And I was there for only four days. So it was, uh, I didn't see everything. And I wanted to hit the tourist spots uh, more. But it was, it was, (laughs) it's just a sheer number of people going, hey, make sure you go there. Make sure you try this cafe on the corner of this street. Make sure you walk down that way. And some really, just really cool, fun suggestions, um, which was nice. Uh, but like I said, it just made me realize that probably, you know, I, I, I'm the last person to go to Istanbul. And um, and it was cool. I went with my wife, my mother-in-law, and my little kiddo, Zayan. He's four. Uh, I don't know how fun it is for children unless you travel around to other places. But we kind of stuck to a lot of the traditional, like I said, tourist main main spots. I wanted to hit those. Because back when I went to Jordan, I didn't really see the things properly. And it just felt empty to not have, you know, tick that off. I think the first time you go, just tick that stuff off, man. So you don't feel like a complete moron. Uh, Even though I'm not a big fan of touristy spots and stuff. Turkey, Istanbul, some of that stuff was great, right? Like um, the the good stuff about it was just, just seeing some of these things. I've always wanted to see the Hagia Sophia um, I, I'm still not sure if that's how it's pronounced. I, clearly, traveling hasn't helped me become more cultured. <laughs> but but it was, um, for me personally, that was one of the hardest hitting uh, places. Like, uh, you, you know, just this, uh, a, a sudden calmness. And like, it, it was just very nice to be there. Uh, it was a very cold day when I went in, just out of the blue in the middle of May. You just had this super freezing day. Zayan fell asleep in his cuddled up in his blankets on his prime, and 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 the architecture and the history. Just you know, just thinking about the history of the place for me, it was it was very surreal and very cool. Um, I do think you know those was it the Byzantine builders. They must have had like a serious case of like neck strain looking up over there. At the if you look at the height of the ceilings, and I'm like, how did they build this back then? And so much of it is preserved. What was um, what was sad though was that it they they've covered up a lot of the church stuff, and it's less of a museum, not a functioning mosque. There was a prayer going on when I went, and I know maybe some people want that, but for me it was kind of like you know just covering up the church stuff was was a huge disappointment. I forgot I kind of had heard about it at some point, but I was surprised when I. I saw it and I remembered that, oh, this is what's happened there. And, and you know, I wish I'd gone five years earlier. Sarah had, my wife, she'd been and she said, you know, it, it, she's like, it, it was so beautiful. Some of those paintings up there, the, the depictions and stuff that she was also really annoyed at 
the stuff being covered up. So that's that's really sad that they've done that. I think you know uh, it was a church in a mosque. It's a unique piece of history, and you know we should honor that and just preserve it and get to see it. Um, that's my two cents on it. I, I'm sure everybody's got some other thought about it, but I just wish I'd seen that. But overall, uh, the whole place was quite, you know, uh, it was still kind of special. And, and if you walk out, the Blue Mosque is like a five-minute walk across this park, and you go in there. I didn't really see it properly because, like I said, the day we went, it was super cold, and Zion was sleeping with me, so I was handling the pram while um, my mother-in-law and uh, Sarah went in. And uh, they they loved it. Again, it's a unique, you know, kind of stunning blue tiled interior. Um, I think Zayan might have referred to it as the Smurf Mosque or something because he thought blue and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm kidding about that. But it would be hilarious too if we had walked in the, and, and they were all like running around in the mosque with Papa Smurf leading the prayer. He does have a beard. He does have a beard. Are we on to something? Okay, well, uh, <laughs> I didn't get up to the blue mosque uh, and I'll come back to that as well. I saw the courtyard very quickly um, and the entrance just very quickly and we got out. I did spend a lot of time because lo and behold, I was with with two women, uh, not to stereotype, but I'm stereotyping uh, uh, at the Grand Bazaar. (laughs) And that was that again. I thought I I really am glad I did go in there because because you think about how actually old it is. And they at the entrance, they still have. I suppose the original gates with the years like 1400 something and you think about what sort of things must have happened through these little alleyways and stuff and uh and that part was kind of cool again you know just because of the history of the place but it's also it's quite interesting it's like a it's a it's a shopaholics paradise and a claustrophobic nightmare all rolled into one. You know, <laughs> the salespeople are really good. You know, they'd be probably doing it has like families and families of it. So they're like the masters of the art of persuasion and stuff. Uh, they'll convince you you need that 10th Turkish rug or the 20th fridge magnet and stuff. And so you have to kind of be careful about it. But I think uh, we kind of enjoy looking at the stuff. Uh, you got to bring your bargaining skills to the table here and, and just be wearing comfortable shoes, okay? Uh, getting lost, haggling your way out. I think all of that is part of the night, uh, the, the experience. And it's cool. It, it was nice. It's built um, near other spice markets and whatnot. And, and I didn't see all of it. I don't know what all I saw, to be honest. It's just so huge. And we had multiple gates. Every time we exited, we were like, okay, because we went there twice uh, over two days. And, uh, and I was just like, I think this is where we came in last time. No, nope, nope. That's a whole new entrance and exit we found uh, coming out. Uh, there's one thing. Don't eat. I, I'm going to go into these things in a bit, a bit later in the episode about things to watch out for. But I can't help but tell this one right now. Do not eat around in, in cafes around that area. Okay. These are like, if you're a Dubai Saudi kid, you know what cafeterias are like, right? I'm talking about Jabal and Noor type and the shawarma shops. So you have those donor kebabs there uh, and, and those kind of cafes, same look and feel. And you would think the prices would be similar to cafeterias around. Nope. <laughs> the touristy sites charge you so much. I don't think it's like a scam. I just think the prices are hiked up a lot, but just too much for that kind of stuff. Having said that, the food was really fresh and really nice. Meat was really good there for some reason. The fruits were awesome. So I did enjoy eating. But if you go away from the touristy sites, you'll find normally priced places which are very affordable and the food and the people are really nice. Okay, so that's that's one of the problems like any other, uh, obviously, like any other touristy kind of country, right? Uh, what else did I try? I tried Turkish tea. You know, they give you that a lot. Uh, the coffee and the Turkish coffee is also really good, as people know. But to have it there, they have these tiny tulip-shaped glasses to serve it in. They, they're kind of like shot glasses for tea enthusiasts or coffee enthusiasts. Like it's it's like you'll be sipping tea like a Turkish cowboy downing shots at a salon. <laughs> it's a, a caffeine-infused game of bottoms up. Uh, no, I liked it. I, I liked the tea and the coffee there as well. It was, it was nice. They, they want to offer that. And of course... You cannot miss 
the Turkish delight when you go there. You know, when I say you can't miss it, you can't because they force it down with everything. Everywhere you go, everything you buy, it's almost like anything you buy to give you Turkish delight with it, which is cute. And they're really good there. Uh, I had some, I wasn't a big fan of Turkish delight when I was growing up. And uh, my dad always loved it. And now I have a newfound love for it. it. It's great. Like, you know, it's this sweet treat, sugar-coated adventure for your taste buds because they're different flavors as well, you know. Uh, and and they're, it's, I, I have to be honest, like, they're kind of addictive, you know. They should come with, like, a warning label or something, like, caution may, may lead to uncontrollable cravings and empty wallets because uh, we, we ate a lot, Um I was hooked onto that stuff. We bought some home as well. Uh, moderation is key. Um, unless uh, you want to turn yourself into a Turkish light addiction support group or something. Uh, so it's good. And, and when I say they have it everywhere, even in the hotel we were staying, this was the Conrad Bosphorus. Bosphorus is the area. It's kind of by the near enough to the ferries and the riverside. It was a river, right? And uh, so it's a cool place to be. The hotel's very nice. The staff, amazing. And it would leave a couple of Turkish delights for my uh, wife and I in our hotel room and, and for my mother-in-law in her room as well. Really good, different flavors every time. And, and that was a nice little touch. They also gave like a little cute package for babies and kids because they saw Zayan. Very nice and helpful when they see kids and prams. So they had this nice shampoo set that they gave on after the first day when they realized I'm with a kid. Uh, and all that was very kind of nice touches they have there. Uh, there was one time we were leaving the Grand Bazaar and we were trying to catch a taxi. And the guy stopped in the middle of this thin lane and 10 cars piled up behind while I was trying to negotiate with this dude and then put the pram in. And it all took a little while. Not a single person honked. And I asked the taxi driver, they all have these Google translators. English isn't common there with, with a lot of places. So, they, But they do have these translators. <laughs> we had this conversation over translating, uh, over a translation app. And he told, and I said, how come no one beeped? And there was a lot of patience. And he said, yeah, yeah, of course you have Prime and stuff. People will wait. Um, they're impatient in different ways. Uh, that's the nicest thing that I had, experience I had with the taxi drivers because Let's let's get into some of the dirty stuff now. Right? Taxi drivers, the way they drive is uh, as bad as anywhere else. But they're also just very like rude and bored, and will try to scam you by trying to drop you off a little earlier to the spot you're supposed to. They'll overcharge you like hell. You need to ask them to put on the meter, which is like lit, like I'm not exaggerating, like ten times cheaper, right? Uh, so, so you got to do that. Trips that will cost you 50 Turkish lira, they'll try to charge you like 400, 300, 400 liras instead. Okay, so I, I really mean they really go after it. Ask if you do uh, plan to use taxis in Turkey. If you go to Istanbul, make them put on the meter. Otherwise, refuse it. And make sure they don't talk you into dropping you earlier because of traffic and stuff. We did completely leave cabs after we were scammed a few times and the fact that some of them smoke in there. And I'm going to get to the smoking in a second. <laughs> And we found the tram and the understood the system. And once we got that, walking around the city is really fun. It's easy uh, in some ways. Uh, the weather was nice. And so the tram and the bus and all that kind of made it much easier, much more convenient and much faster to get through, get around. So I, I would recommend that instead. You know, there were a few other good places like lit that we went that were interesting for me again. It was the, the, the Topkapi Palace. It took me the whole holiday to learn to say it right. And we kept calling it the Topi Palace, which in Urdu, in my language, means the Topi is used for hat, but it's also kind of used as a slang for like put one over someone, you know? So if you gave someone a Topi, you've tricked them, you've conned them. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's a it's a magnificent residence of the Ottoman Sultans, right? Back from back of the place. And um it's, it really is. It's a place where you walk. You can walk with the footsteps of royalty, um, uh, and they lived in style. Like it was pretty cool. I loved my personal favorite was actually looking at their clothes, their wardrobe, because they, they have it on display, and they are these huge things, right? Like just their outfits, just huge, encrusted with diamonds and whatnot. Like it was really beautiful, beautiful colors, outlandish. Like they would make Elton John look 
uh, like a peasant, you know, and, and and they were and when I say big, they were uh, honestly probably as big as my apartment. I <laughs> they're just tall and huge. I don't know how big these guys were. And uh, every time I looked at it, I'm like, what did they do? They went out and go, hey, I'm going to drape myself in this or the red one or the turquoise one. What's it going to be today? Uh, emeralds or diamonds, just beautiful stone work all over it. Very cool to see. Uh, the palace was uh, interesting in different ways. They have this one section, which is called the Holy Relics. And I, I loved everywhere where they had these signs, probably from before where you can't take pictures. But everyone had their cameras out, and I guess you just can't stop that stuff from happening. And the holy relics had all these Islamic stuff, like the the Prophet peace be upon him, uh, his uh, things, his hair from his beard and stuff, and like swords, and and that was all very cool to see uh, from his from the people around him from that era um, preserved there. So a couple of things there that were very cool, right? Um, what else did I experience there? Those were the main stuff. Like I said, the food was really good. I tried, what was it? Um, Pida? I think they call it this kind of bread stuff with cheese. I mean, well, the toppings can differ, but they call them Pida. I think that's how it's pronounced. And man, they made them fresh. And again, like the meat was good. It was just great food that we had along cafeterias on the way home. Um, freshly baked bread stuff by women just sitting there you know it was just that stuff was very charming and and, and enjoyable i think um the the the, the, the problem stuff comes in with, with well first of all the amount of smoking man like it's like they're it's like an olympic sport there <laughs> you'll see smoke clouds everywhere like it's a like it's a dragon convention i don't know like the whole population decided to audition for a turkish version of like chimney idol i don't know <laughs> you'll find people puffing away with such enthusiasm you'll wonder if smoking cigarettes are training, you know, if they're actually just smoking or training for like a smoke ring blowing championship, just to bring your own oxygen tank and gas mask, you'll be fine. All right. From the secondhand smoke. Honestly, it is. It's also not just like in a lot of places you f find old people smoking over here was a lot of young people, a lot of young people smoking. I wanted to run up to them and go, hey, man, the 70s are over. No one else in the world is smoking anymore. Maybe vape just so you look more uh you know current <laughs> but they, that was one thing that really shocked me this the cigarette thing was quite funny it's it's big there and then there's the infamous rudeness of staff all right so the, the, there's a huge difference i think i was warned by some friends that turkish people can be rude i think turkish people largely were very nice um especially in the hotels and on the streets the common people but the but the staff at most of these places, oh wow, it's like um, it's it's, it's they, they perfected they perfected the art of grumpiness. Okay, uh, maybe they attended like the wrong training course. It's called customer service with a scowl seminar. <laughs> you be don't be surprised, right? If you get there, you get like a cold stare when you ask a question of the staff, and um, they just develop this superpower of teleporting away whenever you need assistance. You can never find them. If you run into them, they won't answer your stuff. They like almost, uh, I don't know, they're, they're practicing something, right? Like the grumpy games or whatever it is that they're doing. You could, uh, you really need to try on smiling big and, and charming them to try cracking their poker face while I know. But I had some bad examples of like at the Tuk Kapi Palace again, uh, there was this, place where they had stairs and i'm with a pram with zayan like lying in it you know he's tired he kept taking breaks i'm glad we took a pram and i'm like hey is there another way to go down and he's like he just like shrugs and i'm like well i have this pram and he shrugs again the dude just with a scowl on his face so i'm like okay what am i supposed to do and he just like shrugs with bigger shrug and and then these two people and again i don't know if they were Turkish tourists or there were a lot of tourists from everywhere Europe and everything but two men just came and helped me uh, take the pram down and I found out later when we were leaving there was a there was like this uh, uh what do you call it um a uh, 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 a place to roll up uh, oh my god I can't I'm, I'm forgetting the words for it but just but you know like like a uh what, what do you call this? A plank type thing. Like just you could just go up there and roll up for people in wheelchairs and uh, 
prams and stuff. And I was just like, why didn't you just point me here? I wasn't asking the guy to build one, but this was the common thing everywhere. When we went to the museum, there's another museum. Uh, I forgot the name. Was it the National Museum or the Antiqu Antiquit Museum? Something like that. And it's right next to that palace. And again, the entrance, the security was made like... It had this cabin where you had to go up the stairs, go through the metal detectors and come back down. And I pointed at the pram and he's like, no problem, come up. And I'm like, no, no, there is a problem. I have a pram. <laughs> How do I bring it up the stairs? And he's like, no problem. He's just sitting there staring at me. And I'm like, dude, what do you want me to do? How do I do this? And then again, there was this guy, this kid was Turkish. He just went, sir, I'll help you. And he picked it up and helped me take the pram up. But they had made no offer to help or suggest solutions like hey there's a sideway let me let you can roll in through there and just do the bags or something right so that kind of stuff was a real letdown over there and they really need to have more people walking around helping people and when i mentioned the blue mosque i, I didn't have much time because i was stuck with the pram down even I, I had to walk around a lot to figure out if there was any place where i could go in um, and they've almost like decided if you uh, are on a wheelchair or pram, uh, pram, then it's your fault. Okay. <laughs> so I even found a gate where it said, this is the entrance for people with disabilities or whatever. And there was no way to go up. It was just stairs. And I'm like, how, <laughs> what, is, what is going on here? So they, there's, there's a little bit of lack of accessibility or at least uh, clear information on how to get through. Right. So these incredible historical sites, um, obviously they're not designed back then but you can easily fix this stuff uh but it's it's like they're saying if you can't climb these ancient stairs then you don't deserve to see the view <laughs> just bring your mountain your spirit to these things a sense of humor and conquer the ancient architectural hurdles okay uh also the pram made me realize a lot of the streets are like cobblestone streets <laughs> Is it cobblestone or cobble cobblestone? I guess, and uh, and there's these ancient streets. And man, if you were on a wheelchair, like I was using this pram, that's an off road obstacle course right there. It's like the roller coaster roulette. You just unexpected bumps and jolts at every turn. Uh, and, 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 and ramps. That's the word I was looking for. Ramps. Right. <laughs> we we lack ramps there. So that was sort of the bad side about. The whole visit okay so it took away a little bit but overall i i can't help but recommend the place like i said most people very nice the sights are worth seeing the food amazing uh and when i went the weather was nice just the way i like it so it was perfect you can always look around a lot of tourists but um make sure you don't go at super busy times i think that's the summer uh nice uh you'll you'll get the hang of it. it takes a couple of days you'll find your way around just be smart about it and and make sure you know like any tourist place just be careful about prices and stuff they do do try to scam you other than that there's so many more places that you can see around um that i i i'm not doing justice so i'm just sharing my personal experience uh that was turkey in istanbul i'm grateful that i got the chance to go man it was uh it, it was something off my bucket list so that's good and i'd encourage you guys to go as well and besides that i know if this whole episode has been about istanbul um i'm enjoying i don't know about you guys but i've been enjoying the uh, playoffs man we're down to the wire now it's uh it's looking like it's going to be the heat versus the nuggets which is amazing the Lakers got swept. I hate LeBron, so I <laughs> I don't hate him. He's an admirable player, but also I don't like his attitude. I've said this a lot of times. I'm glad he's out. Um, and so are the Lakers. <laughs> I'm not a Laker hater uh, at all. Uh, but the Nuggets, you know, Joker, it's, he deserves this. And I had I had predicted a Lakers and Celtics final. I'm glad I didn't put money on it now. <laughs> but it. Even this on this side, man, Jimmy Butler, got to give him props, man. He's brought the heat down up till here, the 3-1 as of today. Uh, at this point, although I was, uh, I've been talking about loving the Celtics, I do love them as a team, uh, but they didn't bring their A game to the series. And at this point, I really, for the sake of heat and for Butler, I really want them, it would be great for him to win this championship. I really hope they don't suddenly lose this series from this point on. I mean, that would be tragic as hell. It'd be a remarkable comeback by the Celtics. But let's make it the Nuggets versus the Heat and maybe give Jimmy a good one just at the right time as well, right? He deserves it, man. What a what a story that would be too. So exciting. If you're not watching it, the games have been and the series have all been hard fought and, and it's it's been a good year. Uh, it also makes me think, what is the point of the whole 82 game season? <laughs> 
<laughs> we got, we're going to talk about this some other time, all right? Uh, I got to run. You guys uh, have a great week ahead. I'm going to get back to regular podcasting, so make sure you're subscribed. Uh, leave some reviews, especially on Apple Podcasts. It goes a long way. Tell your friends about the uh, episodes. Have a great week, guys. Uh, take care. Goodbye. Or as a dog would say, woof.